have an idea in your mind of something you want, and you deserve to get it. So how do you get there? Well, welcome to The Idea Space, a podcast devoted to helping you overcome frustration and make what you want a reality. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, high school teacher turned entrepreneur. Now I'm a business development coach. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, overwhelmed, or lost. Every week, I share topics, tools, and strategies to help you move toward that thing you want, create time and energy to do the things you love, get clarity on what you really want and how to get there, and most importantly, stop feeling alone with your challenges. Whether you've wanted to create a better business, job, relationship, hobby, or self, I know there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it with confidence and clarity. Ready to have it? Let's go. Welcome back to the Idea Space Podcast. My name is Jen Liddy. I'm your host. And this month is October. And in October, I'm talking all about the ways we can take action to actually achieve our goals and stop feeling paralyzed, frustrated, and scattered. So today I'm going to tell you about a habit I used to have that completely self-sabotaged me meeting my goals. And it also kind of damaged some relationships that I had. So the pattern was something I did with my husband and also my former business partners and my best friend. Just those were the like the top three that came to my mind where I was doing this mistake. Basically, in short, I was constantly waiting for them to say yes to something I really wanted. Like it's important to me that the people close to me buy into my ideas. And maybe you suffer from that too. To get people to buy into my ideas, I basically believed I needed their permission. I believed that I needed them to say, yes, sounds good. It's okay. Go ahead and do that thing before I could do the thing. So today I'm sharing how I reframed this habit because it kept me really stuck for a long time and it was super frustrating. And if you've been there trying to get somebody's permission to take action on something that you really want, you understand how that feels. You understand the incredible paralysis, resentment, maybe even anger that comes up when you're waiting for permission. So I learned how to change this paradigm. I'm going to teach you today how I did that. And it helped move me so far forward in a way that works not only better for me, but like it works better for my marriage and it worked better for my, uh, with my relationship with my, my best friend. And the moment I realized I was doing it was probably about two years into my first business. Remember that was a brick and mortar. It was a fitness studio. And I was in charge of probably about 35 staff members. I was the operations person. And we were, you know, not making money at that point. I would work a lot. And what what happened this one night was I'd put my son down for the night and began an actual conversation with my husband, John, because you know what it's like when kids are around, you really can't have the deep conversation. So I would wait till Jack went to bed. And not only is nighttime like not a great time for me in general, it's not a great time to have hard conversations. But this was the only chance that we would get to be alone and talk about important topics. So I remember, you know, very clearly I was in the bed, I was on my phone or probably had my computer with me and I was looking at something. And I looked at him and I said, I need your opinion. And his ears perked up and I had his full attention because he's always great about giving me help. And I said to him, you know, do you think we're going to make it? Do you think Method 360 is going to make it? And I felt desperate in my heart. Like I wanted him to say, I wanted him to give me like, get out of here. Of course it's going to make it. But the way he looked at me, I knew that was not the answer I was going to get. He looked at me and said, Jen, I just don't know. And I really, my heart sank. I wanted to sob, but like I couldn't be angry with him because he was telling me the truth, right? There was no way he could possibly have known if we were going to make it. And at this point, the situation felt pretty grim. We were in our second year of the fitness business. We weren't making a profit. We were working a lot. And I've talked about that before, but we were unable to see like, how were we ever going to get there? And I just kept telling myself, if I only knew more about business, then things would definitely improve, right? Like, I wasn't an expert. I was like, this was all my fault. That was what I kept telling myself. And John is an expert in business. He has years of experience and he has an MBA. I don't have either of those two things in business. 
I thought I didn't know enough about business. And I thought if I only had the right degree, all of our problems would be solved. And I had heard of an online program called B School, which is run by this woman, Marie Forleo, who I did not know at the time, right? That's how long ago this was. Like this was not part of my vernacular. The online business space was not something I knew a lot about. But Marie Forleo had this online program for women who wanted to learn about business. And the program sounded really, really good. I loved the way she talked. I loved like everything she said just really spoke to me. Her website made it clear that she really wanted to help. I loved her program. It sounded like everything I needed, but it was $2,000. And in my head, B-School was going to save me, but I didn't have $2,000. I had not only $0 in my business account to spend on this, I had also already borrowed $25,000 to put into the business for the startup. I was already working 60 to 70 hours a week in sweat equity. And I was already spending my own money on the business in many ways, including childcare. How the hell could I invest another $2,000 in this business that was not making any money? So I did what any woman who feels broke and powerless and confused does. I asked permission. I continued the conversation with John that night and I said, well, I'd really like to try this thing called B-School. I think it'll help me run the business better. And I know a couple of people who have been through it and they rave about it. And I was excited by learning everything Marie Forleo had to teach. And then I made my mistake. I asked permission. I said, what do you think? Can I do it? And he looked it over and he said, you don't need this. You've already got what you need. This isn't going to save the business. And I'll tell you, in that moment, I was really crushed because B-School was my big hope that we could actually turn the business around, that I could learn what I needed to know. But in that moment, my husband had said no, right? I sighed, I turned over and I went to sleep and I felt really shitty because that to me was the final word. And I couldn't argue because frankly, like I wasn't making any money. I was costing us money every day. I felt like I had no power. I felt like I had no leg to stand on. And I never brought it up again. It was demoralizing on so many levels. And I want you to understand, this is not my husband did this to me. He is a wonderful man. He is super generous. He's happy to help me in any way he can. He does not hold me down or does not want me to feel bad. And his whole mantra is like, happy wife, happy life. But in his mind, he truly believed I did not need that program to be successful. And in my mind, I truly needed his permission to feel validated in going forward. And I wonder if you've ever felt the way that I just described, having to ask permission for something, waiting for somebody to give you the red light or the green light and say, yes, go ahead. And when they give you the red light, you're just like, oh, I've got to go find another plan and convince that person, right? Would B-School have saved our business? No. Actually knowing now what I know now and looking back, an online course is definitely not what we needed. And you know, though I hate to say John was right, he was right. I had everything I needed inside of me. I'm sharing this story only because it's a vital moment when I realized that I was asking my husband for permission and I was setting us both up for failure. Can I have this is a shitty question for one adult to have to ask to another adult. It puts one person in the power position and the other person in the subordinate position. You feel like a child when you're asking permission. Can I have this? And I realized I was putting this, putting us both in this situation all the time. Can we buy a new couch? Can I sign up for this new gym? Can I go to North Carolina to visit my family? Basically, by asking him these questions, I set him up to either be the hero with a yes or the jerk with a no. And shortly after the B-School debacle, John explained very honestly to me that every time you ask permission, Jen, I feel like an asshole if I have to say no. And frankly, I resented the shit out of him because no adult wants to hear no. It creates shame and guilt and embarrassment and pain for everyone, including the person who has to say no. This pattern sucked for both of us. And believe me, my husband did not want to give me permission as much as I didn't want to ask for it. And so finally, I realized, oh my God, I'm asking the wrong question. I'm asking, can I do this thing? And there are only two answers to that question, yes or no. 
because maybe is still a no. So I started to learn how to ask better questions. And when we had, when I had better questions, we had better conversations and I got better outcomes for myself. So the way that I started to reframe it, I'd like to talk about how we can make this thing happen. I'd like to talk about how I can work out going down to North Carolina to visit my family. I'd like to discuss how we might go about getting a new couch. I'd like to discuss the timeline for us getting a new couch. I think we need a new couch. I'd like to discuss that timeline. That's very different than can we get a new couch? Can I go to North Carolina? Another way that I started to talk to my husband is, what are your thoughts about this? I'd like to do this. This is a concern I have. This is a problem I'm having. What are your thoughts? I'd like your help in solving this problem with me, not for me. What are your thoughts about how I might reach this goal? Every time I asked a question like that, and if you're noticing, they're not actually questions. They're setting up conversations. They're statements that say, let's do this. I'd like to do this. Give me your thoughts on that. Every time I did that, it led to a conversation and he would come back at me with great questions and I stopped feeling so judged and powerless. And he stopped, I stopped feeling like he was the Oracle and he, he could either be like Superman or, or a schmo, right? Like we both were so much better because of it. The paradigm became less about, can I do this? And more about how can I make this thing happen with real solutions and solutions that I could be a part of, right? I'm going to give you an example here of a time when I used this paradigm and I still didn't like the outcome though. This isn't like what I'm teaching you here isn't all rainbows and unicorns. About a year ago, I got a phone call from a person who has a, a, like a radio show out in LA and she did a call with me and she had found my stuff and really liked my stuff. And we had like an hour long conversation about it. And she said, I'd really love for you to come on my my show it's both on tv and radio right and it's like broadcast in a whole bunch of different places and i was super excited and then she said the cost is five thousand dollars and i was like oh like i didn't even know that this was a thing like people pay to be on the air and so that was kind of news to me but i was super jacked up and super excited so i said you know i'm going to talk with my husband about this i did not say i'm going to ask my husband permission or or I, i said i'm going to talk with him about this we make decisions together So I said to him, hey, listen to this. This is what we talked about. It was super exciting. This is what it will be like. And I'll be on the radio and I'll be on TV and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, okay, well, what's the, how does it all work? And I told him about the money and the travel. And he's like, well, do your clients listen to that radio show? Are the women that you want to reach, are your, is your ideal client listening to that radio show? He's like, what's the return on investment for you? And I'll tell you what. I was super pissed. I was like, we were in the car having the conversation. I was pissed for a long time that day. But his question was a valid question. And I was pissed because nobody likes to like be shot down, but he didn't shoot me down. He asked me questions that got me thinking. And frankly, they were good questions. Frankly, I'm lucky that he asked that question. He didn't say, no, you can't do it. He wanted me to come to the answer. And frankly, that's what a useful coach does for people. Um, I'm going to give you another example. I, I wound up not doing the radio show, by the way, because he was right. There was no return on investment that I could count on. And the investment was just way too much. Another paradigm that became less about can I do this and more about how can I make this thing happen was there was a coaching program I wanted to do like right at the beginning of when I was leaving the, the fitness studio and starting my coaching career. I wanted to join this online program. Uh, it was $297 a month, which is a lot of money. Like I, I get that that's a lot of money. It was a lot of money for me, especially at that time. I had followed this coach for over a year. I had read her books and I knew that she was absolutely going to help me because I consumed all of her content. I trusted her. I knew she would get me where I wanted to go, but really $297 at that point, I wasn't quite making enough money to feel really confident in investing that. So I went back to the old question. I said, John, can I do this? And he said, Jen, you've got to think about this differently. How many clients will it take for you to pay for this yourself out of your business account? And then the light went on in my head. I was like, oh my God, this coach was going to teach me how to get out of my own way and how to get more clients. And she would essentially pay for herself within a month. So I'd always come to John with, please solve my problem. 
basically, I want to do this thing. Can I? I want to do this thing. I need you to pay for it. And that was like my paradigm with my business partners in my first business. And it always felt like we were waiting for permission. And even saying this right now, it's like the shame starts to stir up. It's so embarrassing to have to ask for permission because it puts you in such a powerless state. It's asking for permission versus collaborating. It's talking about problems that you need solved rather than talking about outcomes or solutions that you want to work on together. So rather than discussing how this would get me where I want to go, I never thought about coming to him with a solution. I never thought about showing him the value. I was always asking for permission. And it's easy for me to say, stop asking for permission, ladies. This is so easy to say, but so hard to do. And I want you to know that this is something that I still see every day with women I talk to who want to work with me, but they need to ask their husband for permission. And frankly, I'll kind of coach them through this because it's a paradigm shift that once you make this paradigm shift, everything changes in your life. But here's the reality for me. In my house, my husband still makes a lot more money than I do. And sometimes I fall back into my permission asking ways. And what I'm really looking for is a conversation with him. I just want to talk with him about it. And sometimes I would like his input. And other times he just really needs to know that it's important to me. And sometimes the conversation is about how the cost of whatever I'm looking for will impact our family, right? So here's how the conversation goes generally. I'm thinking about doing X because I really want Y. I've done some research and found this option and this option. Here's why I like them. What are your thoughts? Can we talk about how to make this happen? Can we talk about whether this is a good idea? It just opens a conversation. It opens a pathway forward. When you give someone the opportunity to only say yes or no, there is no room for conversation. And that's where shit starts to hit the fan. There's only room for, yes, you're my hero, or no, I'm really angry at you now. I feel resentful toward you now. I feel shamed and guilt and painful and pained. Are you asking permission? Do you spend a lot of energy trying to convince somebody for something? You might be waiting for permission from yourself, or you might be waiting for permission from a mentor or a coach. Like you might be waiting for your coach to say, yes, that's your perfect perfect offer. Go for it. You know, I do that sometimes too. Like, oh, I can't move forward to this until I talk to my coach. No, my coach isn't there to give me permission. Sometimes you might be waiting for permission from a family member or a friend or from a spouse or partner in your life. And if you are, please stop judging yourself because we've all been there. You also need to stop waiting for the, you also need to stop judging the other person that you're waiting for the yes from. And if it's a long established pattern like it was for me, I promise you it can be disrupted, but it takes time and confidence and kindness to both of you. Please don't spend one more minute beating yourself up or berating your partner in your mind. Instead, start formulating better questions. Start having conversations. Stop being afraid of the answer because that radio spot conversation, I was pissed off about that answer, but he was right. And it only made it better for me. And it made me be able to make my own decisions more clearly and strongly. Start finding solutions rather than merely stating problems and looking for somebody else to solve the problem for you. Come to the conversation with a plan. Come with a solution. Come with an open heart and an open mind and a little bit of willingness to be vulnerable. Because when you do, I promise you'll begin seeing incredible results. You will move forward with your goals so much faster. And you'll experience empowerment and peace in a way that you never have before and you will actually get what you want. And if you're struggling with any of this getting what you want stuff, then sign up for my free workshop. I'm offering it three times live at the end of October and once in the beginning of November. If you go to www.jenliddy.com slash forward slash spinning, S-P-I-N-N-I-N-G, You'll be able to register for any of these three free programs. They're called Stop Spinning Your Wheels and Grow Your Business. Basically, it's three doable steps to help you get where you want to go quickly and more easily. And I'm going to be there live, so bring your questions. And again, thank you for showing up for this podcast because I know that there's a lot of people you could listen to out there, and I really appreciate that I'm one of them. Thanks so much. Talk to you next week. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. You can access more free tools and video trainings at www.jenliddy.com slash 
free sources. That's F-R-E-E sources. If you found this podcast helpful, I'd be so grateful if you subscribed and gave a review. And if you have a friend who'd benefit from today's topic, tool, or strategy, please share the Idea Space podcast with her. That way, together, we can help more women achieve their dreams and take action on their ideas. Isn't it time we all were able to get what we want? Join me next week. And remember, right now, all you need to do to make your idea a reality is take the very next step you know how to. Bye.